The FAM-92 Stinger is one of the most iconic shoulder-fired man-portable air defense systems in modern military history. Since its development by General Dynamics in the 1970s, the Stinger has become synonymous with mobile air defense and is currently produced by Raytheon. Known for its versatility, reliability, and combat effectiveness, the Stinger missile system has been a core asset in the arsenals of various armed forces around the world. Designed primarily to counter low-flying aircraft, like helicopters, drones, and slower, low-altitude fixed-wing planes, the Stinger's role on the battlefield is both strategic and tactical. The Stinger operates through an infrared homing guidance system that enables it to lock onto the heat signatures produced by the target's engines. This infrared tracking allows the missile to follow its target autonomously after launch, marking it as a fire and forget weapon. Once launched, the operator is free to move or prepare for further engagement without needing to guide the missile further, an advantage that's particularly valuable in dynamic combat environments where mobility is crucial. The Stinger has an operational range of approximately eight kilometers, five miles, allowing it to engage aerial threats at considerable distances. It also has an impressive speed of up to Mach 2.2, enabling it to quickly close in on and eliminate its target. Equipped with a high explosive warhead and a proximity fuse, the Stinger is designed to maximize damage upon reaching its target, increasing its lethality. Despite its power, the system is highly portable, weighing about 15 kilograms, 33 pounds with its launcher, making it easy for a single soldier to carry and operate in diverse combat scenarios, from urban warfare, to rugged, mountainous terrain. The FIM-92 Stinger is primarily designed to engage and neutralize low-flying threats, including helicopters, drones, and slower, low-altitude fixed-wing aircraft. Its main purpose on the battlefield is to provide frontline troops with a quick response air defense capability allowing them to counter immediate aerial threats that may otherwise pose a danger to ground operations. By locking on to the heat signatures of engines with its infrared guidance system, the Stinger is particularly effective against aircraft like attack helicopters, which are often used for close air support and troop deployment, as well as drones that are increasingly deployed for surveillance, reconnaissance, and even targeted strikes. The Stinger's adaptability makes it suitable for defending key positions, mobile units, and forward operating bases, giving troops the ability to defend themselves against surprise aerial attacks without relying on larger anti-aircraft systems. In conventional military scenarios, the Stinger acts as a vital force multiplier, supplementing larger air defense networks by filling in gaps where heavy anti-aircraft equipment cannot be deployed or where rapid deployment of air defenses is required. In asymmetric warfare, the Stinger's ease of use and portability have enabled it to empower smaller forces and irregular fighters, allowing them to counter well-equipped adversaries with air superiority. The missile's versatility and effectiveness make it a preferred choice for both defending against air assaults and enforcing no-fly zones around critical areas highlighting its role as a key component in modern mobile air defense and a trusted tool for ensuring troop safety on the battlefield. Over its decades of service, the FIM-92 Stinger has been upgraded and modified to meet evolving threats and incorporate advancements in technology. Each version has brought new capabilities, allowing the Stinger to remain a relevant and potent tool in modern warfare. The initial FAMIA-MER 92A model introduced in the 1980s provided the foundational features that defined the Stinger as a game-changing weapon in mobile air defense. It employed an early version of IR tracking combined with a basic fire and forget mechanism, which allowed the operator to disengage immediately after firing. Following this, the FIM-92B model introduced improvements in reliability and operational performance addressing issues found during early use and providing increased confidence in its deployment under harsh conditions. In the late 1980s, the FIM-92 C&D, collectively referred to as the Stinger RMP, 
reprogrammable microprocessor. Took the Stinger's adaptability to a new level by including a reprogrammable microprocessor. This allowed the missile system to adapt to changes in enemy countermeasures without needing a complete hardware overhaul, making it versatile and effective against a broader range of threats. In the 1990s, the FIM-92E, or Stinger Block 1, was introduced with an advanced IR UV seeker and an upgraded missile computer. This version provided improved target acquisition and countermeasure resistance, making it more effective against faster moving targets and aerial threats equipped with decoys and other countermeasures. Later, the FIM-92F, known as the Stinger RMP Block 2, was developed with even more sophisticated electronics and an updated seeker head to increase accuracy, providing enhanced counter-countermeasure capabilities, particularly valuable in air spaces with heavy electronic interference. This model is a standard among many military forces and remains widely used due to its proven effectiveness. Another variant worth noting is the air-to-air -air Stinger ATAS, which was designed specifically for deployment on helicopters, used by aircraft like the AH-64 Apache and AH-1 Cobra. This version gives helicopters a self-defense mechanism against airborne threats, a necessity in contested airspaces where rotary wing assets may encounter enemy aircraft. The FIM-92 Stinger's adaptability has led to its widespread adoption. It is used by over 25 countries globally, including the United States, Germany, Japan, South Korea, and many NATO allies. Its utility spans numerous military branches and environments, as it can be deployed by ground forces and air platforms alike. One of the most well-known applications of the Stinger was during the Soviet-Afghan War, where the United States provided Mujahideen fighters with these missiles to counter the Soviet Union's aerial dominance. The Stinger proved to be incredibly effective, downing numerous Soviet helicopters and fighter jets. Soviet aircraft faced significant losses due to the Stinger's precision and ability to resist common countermeasures. This scenario forced the Soviet Union to alter its aerial tactics, demonstrating the profound impact the Stinger could have on modern warfare. Since then, the Stinger has been deployed in various theaters, including the Falklands War, the Gulf Wars, and other regional conflicts in the Middle East and Africa. In each instance, its performance has been praised for both its accuracy and the tactical flexibility it offers to infantry in ground-based air defense units. Today, the Stinger is considered a critical asset in defending against low-flying aerial threats and is integrated into modern battlefield strategies that prioritize flexibility, mobility, and responsiveness. The FIM-92 Stinger is a high-value military asset, both in terms of cost and battlefield utility. Each missile unit costs approximately $38,000 to $40,000, though this varies depending on the model and any additional modifications. The total system, including the launcher, is valued at around $120,000. While this price might seem high for a single missile, its capabilities in protecting ground forces and taking down potentially high-value enemy aircraft often make it a worthwhile investment. For many militaries, the cost is justified by the Stinger's ability to serve as a force multiplier, providing soldiers on the ground with a powerful tool to counter aerial threats that would otherwise be outside their reach. The Stinger missile was among the first man pads to feature fire and forget technology, allowing the operator to disengage and move immediately after firing. This increases safety for the operator and enhances the missile's adaptability in fast-moving combat scenarios. Another notable fact is that the Stinger's design allows it to be adapted for air-to-air -air use, a feature that has been particularly beneficial for helicopters needing self-defense against enemy aircraft. 
This air-to-air -air adaptation, uh, known as ATAS, allows rotary wing fleets to defend against aerial threats effectively, and it has been adopted by various military helicopters worldwide. The Stinger missile's use in the 1980s Soviet-Afghan war was a pivotal moment, as it enabled Afghan Mujahideen fighters to counter Soviet aircraft effectively. The deployment of the Stinger is considered a key factor in the Soviets' need to alter their tactics and contributed to one of the first major uses of man pads in asymmetric warfare. Modern versions incorporate both infrared and ultraviolet tracking, providing strong resistance to countermeasures such as flares, making the Stinger resilient even in electronically contested environments. Finally, its user-friendly design means that with minimal training, operators can effectively deploy the system, which has contributed to its popularity among military forces around the globe. After nearly four decades in service, the FIM-92 Stinger remains a valuable component of many defense arsenals worldwide. Although new technologies and changing aerial threats have sparked discussions on the need for future improvements or replacements, recent upgrades have extended the operational life of the Stinger. The adaptability of this missile system, combined with its track record of combat success, suggests that the Stinger will likely continue serving as a key tool in air defense well into the coming years. However, with the rise of drones, unmanned aerial vehicles, and next-generation aircraft, there is ongoing research and development aimed at enhancing the missile's performance and ensuring it remains effective against emerging threats. But with the rise of advanced drones and stealth technology, will the M FIM-92 Stinger continue to be as effective on the modern battlefield, or is it time for a new generation of portable air defense systems? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Stay tuned for more in-depth looks at the world's most advanced military technology. See you in the next video.